Today, we have a very exciting webinar ahead. Actually, I would say that it's one of my favorites because apart from talking about the smooth and quick connection that we have in an open tunnel with uh, Plaxis and LeapFrog, right, uh, which makes this software unique in the market, we count with the presence of one of our early users access that have been implementing tunnel design solutions for several months already. So I will start introducing myself. Uh, my name is Sergio Cediel. I work as a product sales engineer here in Bentley, taking care of the civil design solutions already for three years. So all the solutions that has to do with road design, bridge design, railway design, site development, and now, of course, tunnel design as well, right? Before joining Bentley, I've worked as a civil designer, okay, in a Spanish company, uh, but also I had a chance to work in international projects as in, like in, in the HS2 in the UK. Um, yeah, basically, if you have any question any time about any civil design solution, I will be happy to support you and give you all the information that you may need. Today, in, like in the previous webinar, uh, here is with me my colleague, uh, Vlad Grigoras, Product Manager of Bridge and Tunnel Design Solutions here in Bentley Systems. How are you, Vlad? Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. So my name is Vlad Grigoras. I am a structural and civil engineer with a master's degree in geotechnics. I have over 13 years of experience on designing different type of structures. Again, what is built over the ground and under the ground. So I have taken a lead on any type of projects. I have joined Bentley in 2017 as a quality assurance engineer. And currently I am the product manager for open bridge designer and open tunnel designer also. Great, thank you, Vlad. And as I said thank today, you. Uh, we are very honored and very thankful to have uh, Anna Emiliano dos Reis from Technosistra SWS Advanced Tunneling. Hi, Anna. Many thanks for joining. Hi. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. You can tell us a bit uh, about yourself, uh, your background. What yes. are you currently doing? So I'm an infrastructure beam specialist with a master in uh, infra beam manager. I have uh, 15 years of experience in uh, infrastructure projects, such as metropolitan and tunnel uh, projects. Uh, now I'm responsible for the BIM implementation in Technosistrice West uh, Advanced Tunneling. So for the, we are focused on the BIM implementation for the tunnel assessment and the rehabilitation of the existing galleries. Excellent. Many thanks. I think that we have a very interesting session ahead. And again, Anna, many thanks for your time and efforts to to collaborate with us. It's a pleasure. Okay, that's great. Uh, as uh, we usually do, I will launch a poll, okay, because it will be interesting okay, for us to understand who is at the other side of the screen today. Okay, so yeah, about your role, which is the follow, which, 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 what of the following roles, sorry, uh, you feel more familiar with? Uh, are you a tunnel engineer? Geotechnical engineer or mining engineer, architect, geologist, or beam manager. So let's see what we can expect um, today. I mean, the main focus, right, of this session was, of course, for your technical engineers and for geologists. So I expect to have more of them today, but you never know. Okay, I can see the people still voting. I think now I will close it. Yeah, thank you. Many thanks for your responses and we will see the responses. There we go. We have more your technical engineers or mining engineers. Many thanks for that. Tunnel engineers as well, geologists, architects, beam manager. Okay, that's great. We have kind of a combination apart from your technical engineers or mining engineers, we have kind of a combination of different roles. Many thanks for that. And let me hide it again, and let me run the second one for this first session. Okay, this one we would like to ask you, what software do you use for your technical analysis? Plaxis 2D or 3D, uh, Rock Science 2D or 3D, uh, Midas GTS NX or other? I think that here we have opened the, the, the functionality of peak multi-choice, sorry. So yeah. You can you can pick more than one, and if you click in other, it will be great if you can leave in the chat box what is the what is the software that you are currently using. 
Anna, while the people is voting, do you have any previous experience with these softwares? And before, I mean, uh, you start using our tools? With the geotechnical, no, mm -hmm. no. Only now I started, so. Okay, so let's see. Uh, it seems that we have most of the people that are more familiar with Plexis, okay. Um, after that, we have kind of a draw uh, from here. I cannot see it very well, but no, right? From raw science and other potential solutions. As I said, it would be great if you can leave your comment uh, below so I can see them. Okay, great. I will hide the poll and let me see to check. Okay. Okay, perfect. So super quick because I don't want to to spend a lot of time with this intro, right? I just wanted to kind of wrap up about the different sessions that we have been doing so far about this series of uh, related to Open Tunnel. We start some weeks ago uh, with this expert talk, uh, we call it, right? Where we basically uh, talk uh, Vlad, Claudio from Ayesa and myself about former workflows, existing workflows, and what would be the ideal workflow for tunnel engineers, right? So if you didn't uh, watch it, uh, well, here you can have a QR code. If you don't have with you the phone to scan it, don't worry, if you can you can access my, my LinkedIn profile, uh, Sergio Cedil Gomez, and from there you can access to this interesting call. Okay, it was uh, it was very, very good one. So from there we jump into the first webinar, Okay, where we basically introduce Open Tunnel Designer to the to the to the attendees, right? We well we describe the the workflow from start to scratch in a high level view because of course it was an introduction. And again, if you would like to uh, have a look at it because you would like to little by little get familiar with the tool, I will highly recommend you to to have a look. Anyway, if you really want to progress and have more uh, free sources to train yourself, uh, you can contact me and Vlad, and we will support you. And yeah, and today we are in this second session where we wanted to put the focus more in that integration about Open Tunnel Designer with Plexis and Leapfrog. Okay, uh, it's very likely that we will have a, a third one, a third session, right, about the new release where we are going to explain to you the new functionality that is going to be pretty kind of a game changer, right? So we will we will see, but I will remind you later as well. So yeah, uh, quickly about today's agenda, I mean, super quick, handing over to to Vlad, okay. So we'll start introducing you um, Plexis and Leapfrog and that connection uh, together with Open Tunnel Designer. From there, we will have Anna uh, showcasing uh, her amazing project using our tools for tunnel design. And from there, we will have uh, well uh, the Q and A where you can leave your questions and we will answer them. Okay. So that's great. Uh, from there, I will hand it over to you, Vlad. Let me make you the presenter. Yes. And let's okay. see. I hope I it's visible. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Now we can see the screen. Yep. Okay. So I would like to start firstly with uh, a short introduction or maybe a short reminder. Um, some of our products are branded under Sequent. Sequent is a Bentley company. Basically, all our solutions that are dealing with the subsurface world, they are uh, managed by our company, Sequent. And everything that is related to the built world, basically what we see with our eyes ab above ground, that is under Bentley portfolio. So even if you see uh, Sequent Plexis or you see maybe Joe Studio under Sequent, once again, it's still a Bentley product. And I will try to just quickly go through Sequent portfolio. As you can see here, uh, you can start working for the geological model from the desk study with the site investigations. And for this, you can use GIMP or Open Ground and also Leapfrog. And then you can create using different information, you can create your geological model and using that information you can translate it to open tunnel designer and in the latest release also to plexis 3d or 2d what is 
a leapfrog as let's say a power engine for geological model the main um, strength here is the dynamic engineering geology model that behaves as a single source of truth so you can create faults geophysical you can bring geophysical investigation geological maps topography borehole data so any type of information that you have regarding your area that you are investigating you can bring it in sign leapfrog and you can use it to create one single model another solution that we will talk today and i believe based on the responses to the pool uh, we have a lot of uh, plexus users here um, we had in our portfolio plexus as i mentioned in our last webinar we had plexus for the geotechnical analysis we had leapfrog for the geological modeling but we were missing open tunnel designer. So once again, just a reminder, just a reminder here that open tunnel designer is the solution that is creating the B model, basically the physical model, but it connects with the geological, with the geotechnical, and also with asset lifecycle management through iTwin. A short reminder for our, uh, let's say, proposed workflow for intermobility between our products and you will see also um, how our uh, main person here main speaker anna has modified this workflow so that she can use the existing software that she has in her company and just put open tunnel in the middle and trying to connect all the disciplines from her office and basically her colleagues so we'll start now with leapfrog interoperability as an input for open tunnel designer this can be done through ifc so the geological model will be created in leapfrog using different information from there the, ge the geological engineer will send this information to open tunnel designer through an ifc export in open tunnel designer we have two possible workflows that the user can use. One is to import the soil meshes from the first stages of design. Basically, I have my road alignment and I am bringing my soil meshes even if I don't have any tunnel designed yet. I can bring the rail corridor or the road corridor, I can bring any other information. And once I have this model, I'm starting to build my tunnel inside that geological model. The second one is to import these soil meshes in the final stages of design. So I have constructed everything. I know that I don't have clashes and I just want to see how that, those soil meshes are cut by my tunnel. And maybe I just want to send this information to Plexis 2D with the soil meshes around the tunnel. One of the difference between these two uh, workflows is that with any change that you are doing to the tunnel, if you have used the first workflow where you have imported this from the beginning, if you do a change to the tunnel, we are automatically recutting those soil meshes. If you are doing this in the latest stages of design, you will just do it only once when you are importing the soil meshes. So as a workflow, regardless of when you are importing those soil meshes, you are importing the, the model through IFC, you will create some soil materials in material catalog and if you are targeting to send this information to plexus you'll have to assign an analytical property for that soil material and this is something that i will i will show after we have created the soil material in the material catalog we can assign to each soil mesh that we have imported a material with analytical properties when it comes to import this information from open tunnel designer to leapfrog this can be done in any stage of design you will just have to provide your dgn to the geological engineer and he will be able to bring it inside leapfrog and in there using their dedicated tools they will be able to cut the leapfrog model with the tunnel that open tunnel designer created now going to Plexis interoperability, um, in here we are automatically creating Python script files through export. 
it's just a click of a button or just some small settings that you have to do and the entire geometry will be sent to Plexis. And we have some differences between the capabilities for Plexis 2D and Plexis 3D. When it comes to Plexis 2D, we are sending the tunnel lining as a plate or as a region. We are sending the tunnel reinforcement and excavation subspaces. We are also providing some options for the user to specify how to send different reinforcements to Plexis. If you remember from our previous webinars, our main um, file, let's say for creating the model, or our main resource for creating the model is the cross section, the 2D cross section. Uh, let's say we have a four pulse umbrella. When you are drawing th that geometry in a 2D space, you are just drawing some circles. But if I want to send this information to Plexis 2D, this is not acceptable because I'll have a, a soil failure between those circles. So in this case, we are providing an option to say for Plexis 2D, send the four pulse umbrella as an improved soil zone around the cavity. So the user has different options in managing all of these options. And this is also something that is very useful for the B modeler that he wants to see the 3D objects of the four pulse umbrella inside open tunnel. But for the geotechnical engineer, he just needs to receive that area of improved soil zone. For 2D, and this is basically the, the difference between Plexis 2D and 3D here, we are able to send the soil regions. And for Plexis 3D, the user will have to manually create the boreholes inside Plexis 3D. And also, you will be able to send one or multiple tunnels inside one file. So if we have a twin tunnel, you can select the active tunnel that you want to send, and then you can select the second uh, neighboring tunnel, and all of that information will be sent to Plexis. So let's have a quick look here on how the workflow is right now in this, this first version, excuse me, the second version of Open Tunnel. We are importing the soil meshes. And you'll see here that I have a very big model. I hope I can. So this is something like 10 kilometers by seven kilometers and the depth is very high also. Now, if these models are too big, usually what you can do, you can extract like, let's say a corridor of soil information uh, around my alignment so that I, I can work more quickly inside open tunnel because you will not need the information from this corner or maybe this corner. Even if maybe for, let's say the big picture of the, of the project, if you have a very big project with a lot of works for bridges, for roads, you may need this, but maybe for tunnels, you just need a small corridor. Now, this is my, the second workflow that I have presented. I've already created my tunnels and I just imported the soil meshes. Now, if we turn those soil meshes off, we can see the tunnels. I have two corridors with reinforcements attached. Some settings that the user will have to do is to specify for us the path to the Plexis material database. So let's say I am the BIM engineer that is creating the physical model, but I don't have Plexis on my machine. I don't have the geotechnical information about the soil, but I would like to send this information to my geotechnical engineer. In this case, the geotechnical engineer will create a soil material database, basically is the default soil material database, but he will have to save in the global material database the materials for that project. By doing this, we have access to that global material database and we will be able to read it and then create it inside the Python script. Also, we will need for the server, the passwords, a path where we want to export that information and also the ports for Plexis 2D or Plexis 3D.
now we'll create in the material catalog under soils we can see here that we have we are reading the plexus database and we have assigned some analytical properties basically this is the name of my soil that will be in open tunnel but this is the name of the material for plexus we'll now assign to each imported mesh one material from the catalog and we'll just save and attach that information to the meshes we will activate one of the tunnel units basically i would like to send some cross sections along this tunnel we'll start with the 2d transfer and again i will try to stop it here just to explain a little bit so you will see here that we have this cross-section offsets basically this offsets represents the model boundary that we will create in plexus 2d and also will create a rectangle with which we will cut the soil meshes to extract the soil regions from that model the center of this uh, region let's say that we are creating or model boundary it's the working point of the tunnel for the station, the user can do it graphically by just moving along the alignment, and he will see here what is the current station, or by just simply, um, I will stop it again, or just by simply typing it. Now, one important thing here is that the software is asking you select tunnels. Basically, I have this, that is my active tunnel, but also I would like that cut to go through this tunnel also. And if I want to create two models for the same station in the same time, I can just click it again for the second station. And this will help me on the transfer where I will create a model using plates for lining and I will create a model using regions for the lining. You can see it here. and you will see that in plexus 2d we'll just start our server and open the scripts files so this is in recorded in, in real time basically and you can see the speed that it's used for creating this geometry. So this is the option with plates. I have my rock bolts. I have my uh, excavation tracks. So anything that I have, I have my materials, anything that I have defined in open tunnel that I want to send it, it will be sent to Plexus. now the region option we can see the theoretical excavation shape in here this region is for short crit and we can clearly see here the shape of the lining as defined in the open tunnel designer template Okay, let's have a look now on Plexus 3D. I'm trying to show here that for each corridor, I have three different units. So this is corridor one and this is unit three, this is unit two. This is corridor two, unit three, unit two. And you'll see how we are able to send to Plexus 3D some lining portion from here with some lining portion from here so you have the option to send the entire tunnel if you want or smaller pieces and we know that for very long tunnels it's not 
let's say acceptable to send to create basically some very big models in Plexis because you will need a very big model boundary and also you will need a lot of time for meshing, calculating each stage, so on and so forth. So because of this, we are giving the user a possibility to choose what length he wants to send and how to send it. We'll just edit the model. We'll choose one corridor, a start unit, start section, and in the end here you can see that we are automatically showing to the user what will be his length of the tunnel created in Plexis. Okay, and in the same time, I will create a new one where I would like to send the same information, the same tunnel, but I will create the lining as volumes and not as plates. Again, we are opening Plexis, starting the server, and loading each script file. For this, I have cut a little bit from the movie, because depending on the length and the complexity of the trajectory, as it's called in Plexis, and also the number of reinforcements, and so on and so forth, this can take a little bit of time. In my case, this took like five minutes or six minutes. But you'll notice that we are not sending the soil meshes, and this is something that we are working currently in adding for future versions. You can see here the short crit with green. You can see the lining with blue and the interior, interior soil that will have to be excavated during the stages that the user will create. Okay. I think that was all from my side, Sergio. If you have any questions uh, for this, I cannot see any question in the chat yet. So, well, any anyway, we will have time later. I will now make Anna the presenter. Many thanks, okay. Brad. By the way, thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. Okay. There we go. Do you see yes. the presentation? Yeah. Okay. I see now the main slide. Thank you. Uh, I need to. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So just let me hear this. Um, so uh, this uh, presentation uh, is focused on uh, showing uh, the BIM process for the implementation of tunnel assessment and rehabilitation uh, that we are developing inside our company using Bentley, Bentley softwares. Um, I don't know why my mouse is not okay. Uh, I will start with uh, with a brief present uh, brief introduction of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, Technesis Trace West uh, is an engineer uh, company that was born one year and a half from the merger between Tecna, a leader in the design of, of uh, motorway infrastructures in Italy, and Sistress West, West, which has made the underground his core business and at an international level. We are focused uh, on uh, BIM implementation in the assessment and interventions design for the rehabilitation of existing tunnels. Our team is composed of civil engineers, geotechnical engineers, road engineers, hydraulic engineers, geologists, drafters, and BIM engineers. Mm -hmm. 
before I show you the, the project, I, I would like to do a brief uh, explanation of the assessment process. So before uh, designing an intervention, uh, an assessment of the tunnel degradation is done. Uh, this assessment uh, follows, you know, follows the guidelines adopted by the Italian Ministry of Infrastructure and Transport. Uh, these guidelines illustrate, uh, illustrate a procedure for the management of activities aimed at the safety of existing road tunnels to prevent inadequate levels of degradation that can affect the safety of the entire infrastructure. Uh, the guidelines represent a tool aimed uh, at classifying existing tunnels according to the classes of attention, a risk-based classification that will be implemented based on a timetable that is done by levels, uh, level zero, level one, level two, level three, level four, and level five. Uh, with reference to the mentioned classes of attention, uh, initial investigations detailed um, detailed uh, checks, uh, defects mapping, monitoring activities, risk. Uh, sorry, um, uh, a risk analysis and classification, security assessments, and interventions will be programmed. From the investigations, we have data coming from the desk builds. Mm -hmm. uh, from the maintenance interventions, accounting documents, uh, flat checks, borehole TV camera, um, core drilling, a laser scanner survey, georadar, and in-depth investigations. The in-depth investigations give us the defects and the investigation mapping. Uh, the main defects of the concrete are um, mortar, Lining intradust deterioration, short crit deterioration, water infiltration, complex and ramified cracks, honeycomb scrambling, deterioration of the concrete joints, cavities in the lining, sub thickness, and voids on the back of the crown. Mm -hmm. um, so the data and effects are analyzed, and from this analysis, the design solution is decided. In the interventions design, there is the need to limit the, the impact of the highway traffic. So the program implementation uh, requires innovative technical and technological solutions. That is the optimization of structural intervention and automation and speeding up the operations. So these solutions um, can comprehend the, the tunnel renewal or the structure enforcement lining. Uh, in this slide, we have a type for, of each uh, intervention solution. The tunnel uh, renewal design solutions are based uh, on the soil consolidation that comprehends the, the void fillings of the back of the crown, um, the rock vaults, uh, partial or total uh, demolition of the lining, waterproofing and drainage collection system, uh, installation of the steel uh, mesh uh, reinforcement and cast in place uh, concrete. So, and sometimes uh, lowering the road surface uh, and the internal lining. So after the, uh, the implementation of this intervention, the existing lining uh, will not be considered anymore. So it will be uh, like a new tunnel. Um, this intervention aims uh, uh, at the renewal of the tunnel life for 50 years. So it'll be a new tunnel, basically. The, the structural reinforcement lining uh, solutions are based uh, uh, in the total, in the removal of all of the pre existing uh, interventions, the voids uh, fillings on the back of the crown for the con soil consolidation, hydro demolition, thickness uh, restoration with reinforced mesh. Crack uh, stitching and um, installation of the water proofing system, as well as the interception, collection, drainage of the seepage water from rock mass. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, as I as I mentioned earlier, we are a new company and new to Microsoft uh, MicroStation as well. 
So we have chosen an uh, open tunnel uh, because it allows us to have a 3D tunnel model that is capable to connect, uh, to connect with other models such as geological and geotechnical, structural and civil. Uh, we have created uh, this workflow with the purpose of connecting all the disciplines involved in the project. Like in a way, if you receive new input, all the disciplines can update uh, simultaneously and be connected. Um, our project uh, starts with uh, the, um, the analysis of the input data that is coming from the has built um, and the inspection and investigation. This uh, data uh, normally comes in uh, PDF, so the first thing that we need to do is to uh, insert all this, all this data in an editable um, editable file. In a way it can be uh, imported into the modeling softwares uh, so you can draft the 3D models and give uh, support to the design of interventions. All the alignments and road corridors are created with the software outside the Bentley solution. So all the information coming from oh, all the information coming from this file will be uh, um, imported uh, in open tunnel as a XML or DGN or even I IFC file. All the, all the data, all the, um, the data regarding uh, borehole, TV camera, flat checks, um, uh, from the investigations are imported into the leapfrog. Um, uh, into leapfrog, uh, we can uh, so so we can uh, sorry all the the this data from the flat checks and the the borehole are important into leapfrog work. So we can uh, do the the voids model and create a, a flat jack model as well. Uh, in open tunnel, we can export. Uh, I don't know why it's okay. We can export the the tunnel design um, design model that contains uh, the um, information uh, from the tunnel intrados and extrados in you know, leapfrog and um, in leapfrog so it's i don't know it's always in um, in LeafFrog, uh, we export, uh, we can export the, the, the topography uh, as a, and the topography and the, mod, the voids model uh, as an IFC into okay. open tunnel. So, so we can have all this information in the main open tunnel, uh, the main model. So. Okay. Um, in Open Tunnel Designer, uh, we create um, uh, templates for the cross section that uh, allow the modeling of the tunnel. Uh, in these templates, we assign uh, the lining parts and the materials. Um, in Open Tunnel, in Open Tunnel, as uh, Vlad said, we can create geotechnical sections and export the soil into Plaxis 2D automatically uh, with scripting files. So in Plaxis we send the geometrical tunnel information and soil material into Plaxis to proceed with the, the geotechnical verification. In parallel uh, we reference the open tunnel unit in, uh, in post structures and then we draft the uh, the, the steel bars and all the detailed additional elements of the lining mesh reinforcements. Mm -hmm. uh, from the open tunnel and uh, prospectures, we can extract the plans, the profiles, cross sections, uh, uh, reports for the project deliverables. And the open tunnel um, creates a model that can be updated into the cloud and be used for different scenarios as uh, such as asset management, uh, inspections, IoT monitoring or stakeholder engagement. 
uh, in this slide, um, we have a model. Uh, we have the models that we that uh, we draft uh, from the borehole TV camera uh, data. So from this uh, data, we were able to, we were able to create the voids that uh, are on the back of the lining. Um, here in this image, you can see the the borehole uh, georeference geo location. Uh, and here the, the location of the voids uh, together with the, the extra dos and here image uh, with everything together, the topography and the tunnel. Um, in the voids model, we have added uh, this uh, longitudinal georadar polylines uh, that um, these polylines basically represent uh, the, the georadar the longitudinal uh, georadar um, that gives us information about the existing lining thickness. So this can help us uh, confirm the existing of the voids, for example. Mm -hmm. um, in this model, we put together the, the voids model and the uh, flat check model. Uh, with these uh, two models together, we were able to see the concrete compression uh, stress values along the tunnel and verify to an abnormal tension value in the structure corresponded to uh, an eventual void. So um, the, the drawing production um, uh, needs to follow a defined standard, you know, so the project de deliverable. So we, we have created a workflow that can allow the transformation of the void vertex coordinates in polar coordinates uh, to obtain uh, this uh, following results. So we use uh, Python scripts uh, that transform these coordinates in the DXF file, and then we import this file and um, complete the uh, the information no? to produce the, the drawing, uh, the, the to produce the drawings of the voids along the tunnel. Um, in open tunnel, we have uh, drafted uh, the existing models, uh, demolition models, and intervention models. Uh, this model, for example, uh, is a model with all the information uh, regarding the, the existing tunnel. So there's a lot of, uh, there's uh, the cross-section templates where we were able to assign for, for each lining part a material, a concrete material. Um, and in, on this model, we have um, exported the, the voids model as an IFC and, and insert it in the open tunnel model so we can have the, the, the existing model. From the, this model, we were able to extract plans, profiles, and cross-section for the, the drawing production. The drawing production was done in open tunnel design and environment following the always the, the defined standards. So here are some uh, drawing examples. Oh, sorry. So here we were able to extract the, the plans and the profiles and all the sections and the uh, more detailed uh, drawing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to say that uh, there is a lot of work uh, behind the, the drawing production regarding the civil and tunnel customization and organization that is done in the DGN library. So the customization and organization is uh, done according to the company's needs. We have uh, customized annotation groups for uh, plans. So these elements that you see, the profiles, the cross sections, the display views, display rules, item types, everything in a way to increase the, the drawing production. Yeah, I just wanted to add here, <clears throat> yes, as a reminder, mm -hmm. there are, of course, all the civil design solution a uh, solution, sorry, and in this case, open tunnel designer is built on top of MicroStation. So that's why yeah. you have all the drawing capabilities and 2D, 3D modeling from, from it, right? Apart from, of course, all the specific tools for tunnel modeling. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, this model here in the slide uh, is a demolition model. 
that was drafted from the existing tunnel model and from the intervention models. From this model, we were able to extrapolate uh, a table that you see on the right. Um, or it, I can extrapolate an Excel, for example, with the demolition uh, volume from each uh, unit of the tunnel, lining and sidewalks. Uh, here are some uh, drawing uh, examples that were extracted from the model, all these sections and all the, the volumes as well. Uh, this uh, model here represents the proposed uh, interventions for the tunnel renewal, which comprehends the soil consolidation, so the rock bolts and the void filling that came from Lee Frog, and the partial and partial demolition of the, the existing lining and the, the proposed uh, interventions. Re regarding the rock bolts, uh, we have uh, various dispositions in various locations along the, the, the tunnel in order to consolidate the soil before we proceed with an intervention. So uh, here the, the rock bolts uh, were uh, drafted using the, the auxiliaries by station and cell because uh, it was uh, because of all the dispositions. Uh, from the models, we can extract uh, tables with information regarding tunnel units, uh, tunnel length, uh, the start station, the end station, uh, all, all kind of information that we need to, to complete our drawings. Um, here uh, is a slide uh, that uh, shows a little bit of, of uh, the item types customization. Um, in our projects, we need to associate a VBS code to a construction element. Uh, this association will allow to identify this element in a time schedule or in a cost in order to complete the project deliverables. So in Open Tunnel, it's possible to create uh, item types uh, and uh, the insertion of a VBS code, for example, here I explain uh, um, in the group of item types that appear uh, in default in the properties window, we create uh, new ones in a way that when we select an element, the item type that I have created appears. I can, um, I can uh, export uh, Excel, um, an Excel file, for example, to have a list um, of, of of all the the calls that I need, so I can select it here directly. Uh, so this codification will allow the the 4D and the 5D uh, simulation. Um, this model uh, represents the the proposed intervention interventions for the reinforcement of the lining. Uh, where the main defects uh, are water infiltration and cracks. Uh, the interventions comprehend a partial demolition of the lining, installation of the waterproofing system, as well as the interception, collection, drainage, drainage and of the seepage water from the rock mass. Basically, the water is coming from the, um, the rock and we need to direct this water to the to the drainage of the of the road in a way not to affect the the, the, the lining mm -hmm. um, all these elements uh, from waterproofing and drainage uh, were modeled as auxiliaries that were placed uh, by station or placed by extrusion uh, for example it's possible to um, add more materials in the in the auxiliaries uh, it's possible to have uh, the area of these elements and um, and, uh, and the, 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 to to create cells so we can so we can insert some kind of animal the specific elements in the in the model 
Uh, this model, for example, was, uh, was done with the purpose of uh, detecting uh, some uh, clashes uh, between the, these elements, drainage elements, uh, from the, the road surface. Um, okay, uh, this one, uh, this model uh, represents another type of uh, tunnel renewal solution. Uh, lining with precast segments. Uh, this model was drafted with the purpose of extracting the, the coordinates from specific uh, points. Uh, I can extract these coordinates uh, with, the, with the Excel form, uh, Excel file, uh, to give construction assistance for the precast uh, segments installation on site. In the, side we ha in the slide, we have the, the, the plan templates that we use to model the, the tunnel, these uh, precast uh, segments, uh, the model, is, uh, and uh, the Excel that we obtain by exerting these points. So here, uh, the slide uh, talks about the interoperability with pro structures, concrete and rebar model. Uh, in pro structures, uh, we reference uh, an open tunnel unit model, and then we draft all the steel bars and detail additional steel elements, such as plates and connections. Uh, this model uh, represents a small portion of the steel mesh reinforcement, and with the, and this was a model uh, to to verify the quantity of reinforcement steel per cubic meters in concrete. Uh, after this uh, was done, it was a reference to uh, open tunnel model. Mm -hmm. uh, in prostructures, uh, we, we were able to extract the plans and sections and tables and reports uh, containing the, the weight and volume of the, the concrete and the bend, bar bending schedule containing the, the bar sizes, the bar lengths, uh, uh, the dimensions, the weight of the steel of this uh, small uh, model. Uh, interoperability with plexus. Uh, in open tunnel, we were able to create uh, geotechnical sections and send it to Plaxis 2D automatically with scripting files. In open tunnel, uh, with the command import soil, we export the soil and the respective uh, material, and then with the command analytical section, we can uh, export the geometrical tunnel information and reinforcement into Plaxis. Uh, as plates uh, or, or regions to simulate, uh, in our case, the as-built uh, excavation uh, faces, the proposed uh, demolition and the, re the rebuild of the lining or the, the invert uh, slab. So here is uh, the, the exportation. So you can see all the, um, the material that I ha had assigned in the open tunnel, I can see it and uh, the soil as well, the material. So after this, uh, um, in Plexus, uh, for each uh, geometry um, that was determined as regions or plates in the, in the open tunnel, we assign a face in order to stage the, the construction for the geotechnical verification. Uh, in this slide, we have uh, the image that corresponds to each face of the stage uh, construction. Here is the image of the lining excavation, the original lining excavation, um, then the construction of the lining, the existing lining, and, uh, and the construction of the, the existing uh, invert slab. Here it's uh, where we intervene, so we start to demolish the, the invert arc and then rebuild a new one. Here we demolish a part, a partial of the, the lining. And then, and then here we rebuild the proposed lining. So in the long term, the existing lining no longer uh, is no longer active. So the tunnel, the tunnel renewal it is now the, the, the new tunnel. Um, so our next step will be uh, continuing uh, to consolidate our workflow 
and uh, we are uh, very happy that uh, finally in the new release uh, we will be able to export uh, the IFC directly from the application. Uh, something that maybe in the future uh, it will be the next step, uh, we'll be sending all of our uh, models into a platform into a platform uh, where the stakeholder can engage into asset management, uh, monitoring and the program inspections and uh, and uh, and everything. So this uh, cycle never never ends. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very Thank much. You. Very Thank nice you presentation, much. Anna. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Very very nice one. And at the end, at the end, I think that it's it's uh, it's very interesting, right? How how open data is like the integrating element from which you you model the the tunnel, and then you use the other applications that have very smooth integration with the tool, right, to do the analysis, either from the geology, mm -hmm. geology survey, the analytical frame plexes, and also the river, no, the river, uh, yes, from pro structure. So you are now a professional of many tools. <laughs> within the Medley environment. <laughs> That's great. So I need to consolidate a little bit more, but uh, yes, it was nice to see a software that can uh, can talk with other softwares that can exchange the information. So it's it was very interesting to to do this with the, with the Bentley, mm -hmm. the Bentley softwares. Exactly. I think that that's the reason, right, Vlad? Because we we try to position Open Tunnel as the as a unique tool uh, with this purpose within the tunnel market, right? So we already discussed yes, previous yes. webinars. Uh, our main objective when we have started to develop Open Tunnel was to respond to the market needs. So basically, we had already users using, uh, for instance, other softwares on the market or from Bentley portfolio. And they said that we have a lot of problems with tunnels. We cannot engage in a good way. We don't have different connections with different applications. So from the beginning, we had in mind that workflow, that open tunnel is in the center and it just receives or sends the information to other disciplines with a high accuracy and a high level. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Excellent. Many thanks, um, Anna. Uh, I will... I will share back my screen, right? Because I had a poll, I have a poll ready. In the meantime, I can mm -hmm. see here a comment from Nicolas Rubeles Munoz. Uh, excellent exhibition. Anna, thank you very much for your time. It's a, it's, a, it's a software that modelers and designers needed. Is there a manual on use in the software at Bentley? Uh, I, will, I have a, a slide to cover that as well, but I can advance you that we have a free learn server in Bentley where you can access, we have different learning paths. And there you have like a, a course uh, to to start getting familiar with with Open Tunnel Designer. So uh, yeah, this is the this is the poll I prepare after Anna's presentation. So yeah, uh, based on Anna's presentation, right? All the the, the workflow that Techne Sistra is using uh, using Open Tunnel and all the different tools that we have for tunnel design analysis and modeling. Which of the following do you think will be more interesting in 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 order to improve the current workflow uh, within your organization, right? Would it be the Open Tunnel Designer connection with Plaxis? Would it be the integration with LibRock? Uh, the fact that you can also create your drawings and report directly from Open Tunnel Designer, as I said, because it's based on top of MicroStation for the case of the of the drawings, or you can see that it's a matter of all the above, right? All of these functionalities. Okay. I will stop. I will close it. And I will share the results with you. And we can see that most of the people find that all the capabilities we have mentioned with regards to the connection with the different all the different tools as is a great strength. And, and as I said, yeah, we will be happy to support you if you are considering to implement uh, this tool, this workflow uh, within your organization, right? 
Okay, many thanks for, for your answers. I will hide it back. And in the meantime, I have a question here here from Eric after this webinar. Can I have the recorded video? Yes, we, I will be sending the recording to all the registrants, okay? But please, if you can stay just a bit, uh, we are going to have a survey, you don't mind, because, okay? Because it will be great to understand if you like our webinars or not. Um, maybe you, you, you may have a question, right? Uh, which is the tool that, uh, in this case, Anna Reis and her team are, are using? Or what are the different options to, to acquire uh, Open Tunnel Designer plus these tools, right? So, well, you can acquire all of them as an standalone solutions, okay? And uh, what also you can do is go for the civil bundle that we have the civil word suite is called right that comes with open tunnel designer comes as well with open rows in the case that you would like to generate the geometry in in this other tool it comes uh, with pro structures as well which will be very interesting uh, in the case that again you are interested in doing the, the rebar but uh, if you re really want to complement with uh, plexus or leaf rock that one is not included but at least here you have open tunnel open roads um, for sectors that are very good fit for your for your workflow. Okay, so these are the different ways that you can acquire the different solutions. Uh, our annual subscriptions comes with free training. Okay, so that's important to take into account because it always speed up the learning curve, right? Especially if you are completely new uh, with Bentley interface. Um, yeah. Basically, we have, depending on the type of training, you can use the keys. Well, keys, we call the keys, the, the hours of the training that comes with the, with the license, okay? We have different options, possibilities. And uh, yeah, Eric was asking me about different ways to, to start uh, getting familiar with the tool. You can scan this QR code. Uh, I will later share with you in the chat as well the, um, the link to this QR code, but basically it will dra drives you to, to a LinkedIn post that I made some, some weeks ago, where it basically explain all the different free resources that we have for you to learn Bentley tools, uh, starting from Bentley education. If you have any type of relationship with the university as a teacher, or of course, as a student, you will have free access to all the portfolio. We have the learn server as well uh, with different learning paths, as I said, uh, plenty of content on YouTube channels. Uh, I think that Vlad, you are the one, right? Uploading those videos or someone from your team. I am one of them. One of them, okay. <laughs> one of them. Yeah. Uh, we have the Bentley communities, very interesting one. Uh, it's, it's very popular among our users with people just leave their comments, questions, and you will potentially find that answer for that question that maybe someone already have placed. Uh, we have this type of webinars, and apart from that, of course, uh, but under a cost, you have regular trainings or you can buy extra extra keys, okay? In the meantime, I can ask Anna, uh, how did you feel? Because I think that this was your first experience with Bainland environment. Uh, you were not familiar with MicroStation, or were you? Uh, so two years ago, I worked with, uh, only with MicroStation, not uh, because I think the other ones maybe didn't exist yet maybe only Plexus, but uh, I work with MicroStation for maybe one year. So I was not totally not familiar with the, with the software. Same things uh, I remember from then, back then, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, and um, yeah, how was the experience? I know, I know that you have taken with the support of, of Vlad, <laughs> close support. Yes, but... uh, Vlad <laughs> has been very hopeful, uh, hopeful because, um, helpful, sorry, because the changing from the Autodesk environment to this one, uh, MicroStation, it's a little, uh, it's it's very it's it's different. So and and this uh, softwares uh, as well. So I, we needed some some support from Vlad, but uh, he's uh, always available. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, always very nice uh, to help us. So. Thank you again. It's my Vlad. pleasure. <laughs> I'm always trying to support all the users, so yeah, that's not a problem. Vlad is a star, and I think that here we have the case where, apart from Vlad, you you were very motivated, Anna, and you know I think that you were feeding each other. Yeah. Uh, yes. Motivated. Yeah, but we are still we have a lot of work uh, ahead, so. Yeah. We'll still keep in touch uh, for sure. <laughs> Just to, to give here like a small hint, we have implemented, uh, let's say, multiple enhancements based on the review that Anna gave us. 
we would like to mm -hmm. have this or we would like to see this workflow so what we are implementing with each new release is implemented based on the user reviews mm -hmm. and their workflows we are creating this product to help our users basically Exactly. I know that uh, Vlad is always su super super open to hear about new functionality. Actually, the, this new release that we have uh, in a few days or weeks, right, uh, comes with most of the main yes. suggestions from, from the users, right? So yes. th that's also important. I mean, you need to know, correct me, Vlad, if I am wrong, that per year we have like around four releases. It, it depends from year to year, but mm -hmm. we have two to four releases. Okay, so it's always a good chance to you know to, to see your suggestions implemented in, within the tool, because it's now a, a very good moment actually, right? So okay, let good. Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, I will, will almost forgot about the yeah the last poll. Uh, it was basically about this. Uh, about this uh, last webinar that we are thinking about, just to, to know if it will be interesting for you, uh, yeah, uh, to, to register or to attend this webinar where we are going to to, to talk about the new functionality that is going to to be included in the new release. So it will be great if you can vote. So I will see who says yes. So I will pick that name and I will send them like a notification of. Of the webinar, probably probably we will make a LinkedIn live, so it will be good as well if you admin LinkedIn. Okay, uh, let me yeah close. Yeah, I can see that most of the people said yes. Thank you very much for that. And that's it. I was having a look at the question yep. question chat, but I don't have more questions. I can see here that Mr. Mrs. Sorry, so Mane Ba has raised his hand but unfortunately i cannot unmute you but if you can use the question chat box it will be great if not we can we can talk offline after the the session okay i have here more people saying thank you for the presentation Mikel mila okay that's great okay cool um so yeah sergio please please uh, change the quick pull page so that we are visible. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's right, sorry. Yeah. There we go, there we go. Yeah, by the way, this is a scan that if you don't mind, you can scan or access this link. It will be great. So you can just basically write this webinar. So we will take that into a code and, <laughs> and uh, act accordingly. Okay, Jose Ruiz, thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for that. Solimane as well, thank you. Okay, great. So yeah, again, Anna, many thanks. I think it's very, it was very, very interesting. Yeah. Actually, very useful for sure for companies that are currently working as well on renewal actions or implementations uh, for tunnel projects, existing tunnel projects. Um, yeah, it will be great maybe to arrange something similar in the future. So for you, you you will be even more an expert by that time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, extra. For sure. Excellent. Thank you one more time, Anna. And thank you all for joining the, the webinar. Well, I hope to see you in the one that uh, we are right now, let's say, talking to, to do it for the, this release. We hope to have it like in one or two weeks. Exactly. Okay. So stay tuned. It's packed with a lot of enhancements, good enhancements. Exactly. Let, let me remind you that, uh, by the way, here in Hanouts, you will find all the information about, uh, well, the product data sheet about Open Tunnel, the civil worksheet that I told you about that comes with not only Open Tunnel, also other tools, plus the ebook of Open Tunnel, right? And uh, if you have uh, any, I think I will show you as well, because it's always good to show. Um, if you come here uh, to virtuosity.com, here in resources right you will see uh, the webinars okay so we have that previous one that we made for tunnel design this this second one despite you are going to get the recording okay it will be a store here so anytime you can come here right and search for it and get the, the recording okay and of course here apart from it you can find all the different solutions price etc right but anyway uh, feel free to contact us
So that's it. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I uh, hope to see you in the next webinar. Thank you, and again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.